I'm Terrence Lee at the live desk tonight. Students at a suburban high school are working through grief and processing the sudden loss of a respected teacher. This is Ryan Mott. He was a military veteran. He worked in Hinsdale South Science and Special Education Department for 20 years. The school says he suffered a medical emergency on campus just as the school day was starting today. Paramedics rushed him to the hospital, but he did not make it. School let out early and counselors opened their office to any student who needed to talk. I spoke with a mother tonight who described Mott as a role model, someone who stepped up in a big way after her son lost his dad last year. We had a very difficult year last year and Mr. Mott was um, was always there for us. Uh, he helped Zach um, through the summer with his schoolwork. He came to our house, um, helped him because he was struggling, um, you know, in a few subjects and two two subjects. Yeah. Well, I think you guys had a lot of fun, fun times together too. Yeah, we did like playing basketball and stuff. He had a fun sense of humor. Same, um, same with me. He, he didn't <laughs> let Zach slide or, you know, get away with anything. He was good at keeping you, uh, keeping you, you know, in check, I think. And so many uh, fantastic memories to share. In a letter to the family, the school district described Mon as a quiet soul and a powerhouse in the classroom. As you can imagine, a challenging time for so many of those students. So school counselors, again, will be there for anyone who needs to talk to someone or needs someone to listen. We are in Franklin Park near the Mannheim Road Bridge and Addison. Just up these steps is Mannheim Road, where friends and family held a vigil for a couple of victims Wednesday night. Take a look. Some of these images are even hard to look at. This fiery crash happened just after 7 o'clock on Tuesday night where two people, both girls, 18 years old, were in a car that was heading northbound on Mannheim when it went into oncoming traffic and struck a car. The girl's car burst into flames. They apparently died on scene. The other car also caught fire, and bystanders helped pull the victims from that car. One of the victims has been identified by family as 18-year-old Evelyn Martinez. The other victim is still unidentified, but we're told by those at a late-night vigil that they were both friends, both high school seniors. Now friends and family gathered on the bridge Wednesday night to share memories of the two young lives lost. Police continue to investigate here in Franklin Park what led up to that crash. It's something we're seeing across the city, but nevertheless neighborhoods, it hits differently. In Chatham, Greater Grand Crossing and Bronzeville, Colonel Sanders is saying goodbye to three restaurants, once busy with customers, but now suddenly boarded up. There was no communication. Um, I saw what the residents saw, and disappointed just the same way they are. Sixth Ward Alderman William Hall says the news came as a surprise, especially at 83rd and King Drive, where renovations have been underway for months. I say about six, seven months, uh, stop and go. Uh, more time stopping than going. Also stopping sales, the KFC at 75th and Lafayette in Greater Grand Crossing and 35th and Calumet in Bronzeville, leaving employees out of work. Any job loss is a, is a life loss, in my opinion, because everyone deserves the opportunity to make an honest and clean living. A spokesperson with KFC tells us the closures came, quote, as a normal course of business, adding, while this is always a difficult decision, we appreciate the patronage of our loyal guests. But in Chatham, it comes less than one month after local movie theater Cinema Chatham shut down. Vacancies that Hall says he is focused on replacing and revitalizing. We want to, again, look to the future. Um, hopefully we find or reimagine our corner, even if it means tearing down that KFC and building a new business. But we're not going to stop until that vacancy is filled. 34-year-old Gladys Ibanez Olea appeared in court this morning and is now facing multiple felony counts for holding four people against their will. They are a 19-year-old woman, her 2-year-old son, as well as a 22-year-old woman, and her 15-year-old brother, all from Mexico. Lake County Sheriff's deputies raided her home in early February after receiving tips from neighbors of suspicious activities. They say Olea arranged for all four to be illegally escorted into the U.S. from Mexico, promising safety, housing, and jobs. They say she was also physically abusive to the two-year-old boy. Uh, the two-year-old that was there with the uh, his 19 year old mother uh, was being forced into these cold showers during the day to keep him awake so he wouldn't nap. So this way he would sleep for longer periods of time during the night. 
Deputy Covelli says it was a sophisticated operation and they are now investigating to see if others might be involved. He adds the sting was only made possible because of tips from neighbors and without that, they might not have been able to rescue the victims. If you see something out of the ordinary or you feel that somebody could be trafficked or they're being held against their will and something just doesn't seem right, call local authorities, make a tip, file anonymously so it can be checked out because that's exactly what happened in this case. Sheriff Covelli says human trafficking is happening everywhere, so it's not surprising this was discovered in Highland Park. He says traffickers tend to prey on vulnerable people. Today, Olea was charged with eight counts of human trafficking and seven counts of involuntary servitude. Additional charges could be coming. The sign outside its headquarters says, Welcome to Thornton Township, people working with people. But when residents showed up last night to speak at a public board meeting, they got anything but a warm welcome. When I arrived, there was security here. He was standing at the bottom of the stairs preventing anybody from going up to the boardroom. I asked him if the meeting was downstairs. He replied yes. Stephanie Wiedemann and a handful of other residents wanted to speak directly to Thornton Township Supervisor Tiffany Henyard, also the mayor of Dalton, who's generated controversy for spending hundreds of thousands of tax dollars on trips, police security, billboards, and her own personal charity. I'm just curious to see who makes the decisions about how our tax dollars are being spent. But they never got that chance. After being blocked from going to the boardroom upstairs, they were sent to the basement where they were told the township board meeting would be held. It wasn't. They asked for a sign-up sheet for public comment. Never got it. And before they knew what had happened, the four-minute meeting upstairs was over and Henyard was gone without hearing from her constituents. They are violating our rights. I pay taxes here. I have a right to get up and speak whether this administration likes it or not. And not only were the residents shut out, so was a local newspaper reporter who came here to cover the meeting. Um, I was told by a security guard that I was not allowed upstairs where the boardroom meeting is. Josh Bootsma of the Lansing Journal says residents deserve to know how elected officials are spending their money. Thornton Township is the largest township in Illinois. And so there are a lot of people that are affected by the decisions, the financial decisions that this township makes. Even Thornton Township trustee Chris Gonzalez, a frequent Henyard critic, was ordered out of the boardroom until the meeting began. Do you think any laws were broken last night by the way they handled the public? Well, definitely. I mean, if somebody wants to speak, this is a public, it's a public meeting, it's a public building, they should be able to come in. The residents say they'll file a complaint with the Illinois Attorney General's office for violating the Open Meetings Act. Our attempts to contact Henyard also went nowhere. While there are other shelters in the area, neighbors say they don't share space with existing retail and fear this could jeopardize the future of those small businesses. This stretch of business is really important for this entire corridor. On Wilson Avenue, just steps away from the red line, Cornerstone Community Outreach is looking to create a 40-unit transitional shelter for men in place of existing apartments and above first floor retail. There's no precedent for this. There's not been uh, an example of a mixed-use building that shares both the transitional shelter with retail businesses. Along nearby Clifton Avenue, Cornerstone operates three other shelters. So it's not a question of whether there's open arms. It's a, it's a question of, you know, what's good in terms of uh, saturation. In this case, the nonprofit is asking for a special use permit to make it four. I'm very concerned that there's a non-congregate men's shelter going above a 4 a.m. bar. In addition to Two Bears Tavern, the building also houses Uptown Church and Downstate Donuts. The team at Downstate Donuts sharing with us the possibility of a shelter is raising red flags with their insurance provider. I'm mostly concerned with the, the lack of transparency in the process. Meanwhile, Andrew Winter, the executive director of Cornerstone, says there are not enough places in Chicago for those experiencing homelessness to go and this building is a good example of how to meet that need. Alderwoman Angela Clay tells us she is on board with this project moving to the next phase, adding that she is requiring a written safety plan including 24-7 security and cameras. I'm happy to share it. This journey has been 
amazing. He's the love of my life. We've been together 23 years, married in March 24th, 26 together. So yeah, sharing our love story is, um, it's, it makes me happy. The past three years have been dedicated to her husband's health. The once big and powerful Steve Mongo McMichael can no longer move or talk due to ALS, but he's still got his spirit. And now, as we saw last week, an invitation to Canton, Ohio, and the Hall of Fame. He knows, he knows he's in the hall, that's all I ever wanted. All I wanted was for him to know it, but I also want him to experience it. Steve was diagnosed with ALS three years ago and has had some scary trips to the hospital. On Thursday, another moment of panic. When he was dripping sweat and he was hot and he had a fever. The Hall of Famer is now on antibiotics for a urinary tract infection and doctors did a thoracentesis to drain fluid out of his left lung. And he's on his deathbed. There is no cure for this and he's suffering. I mean, you know, he's going through a lot. I'm not going to say he's suffering because he is hanging in there for the hall and we are keeping him as comfortable as he can be. The dream was to get Mongo into the Hall of Fame. Now the new dream to get him there in person for the induction ceremony where so many other bears have been welcomed. Hall of Fame's bringing me to Canton in March to figure out maybe like a medical RV situation that he can, you know, stay in most of the time. Misty says she's grateful for Chicago's continued support and hopes the prayers keep coming. Thank you for loving him as much as I do. Yeah, this TikTok blender goes by Shorty Blends and has made quite a reputation for himself, attracting a lot of guys with longer hair who want to come in and get a transformation. Let's show you Daniel's before shot, and then we will show you the transformation that's been underway here at the hands of Emilio Chavez. Spin him around for us, Emilio, and look at Daniel now. Ooh, how do you like that nice look? That's pretty good. Yeah, it looks awesome. Look at his face. I love this look, Emilio. Um, tell me, how did you become the go-to guy for people with longer hair? Um, man, honestly, it was a price to me. I, I did nothing but short haircuts. And one time I just posted a video with somebody with longer hair. And from him, I just got a bunch of longer clients. Honestly, I didn't really know how to do them. And I kind of figured out as long as I went, I just... Yeah, I just made it happen. <laughs> and how big of an influence have, has your TikTok page had on your business since you, uh, yeah, I mean, you're 22 years old and a co-owner of a salon? Yeah, honestly, it, it's been a huge impact on, on my business. I get like five, six new clients every single day. I get clients that drive three hours to come get a haircut. Wow. I got clients that flew in as well, yeah. like just for the haircut, which is crazy to me because I'm just like, I just cut hair, I don't know. Well, let me bring in your partner, Arnold. Arnold, come over here and just tell us how you feel about this partnership and what that TikTok is doing for business. This is crazy. I see him cutting up new people all the time, and it's great to see, you know. Um, when I first started, I actually began as a barber working with him. So everything that I've learned, he's actually taught me all the gems, and it's crazy that we're partnered up, you know, here opening up Ace Hair Studios. Right. And uh, we're all proud of him, you know. Well, you guys have a really bright future, and we appreciate you letting us be here to watch your transformation. Once again, Shorty Blends is the TikTok page, and it's Ace Hair Studio in Elgin. Everywhere you look, you have History of the Tribune. Chicago's most unique skyscraper, restored and reimagined. Ooh, behind the curtain. During construction, countless time capsules were discovered. Had a letter from the sports editor of the Chicago Tribune. Including the most significant relic from the biggest scandal in Chicago sports history. What other wonders does the tower hold? Streaming on your smart TV. Only at Fox 32 on Fox Local. Search Fox Local on these streaming platforms. Download and watch today. Yeah, we're going to the crown. Let's do it.